Hi everybody, welcome back to Chalkboard Yoga Studies. I know it's been a while since I posted one of these videos, so I'm very excited to be back and to be chatting about today's uh, concept, which is Viveka. Now, Viveka means discrimination, but it's not discrimination in the kind of bad sense that we often hear about where, you know, some social group has been the victim of discrimination and therefore we would we would take certain actions or create, implement certain legislations that would rectify that injustice. It's not that kind of a discrimination. It's really the literal sense of discrimination, which means to discern, to be able to discriminate between something and something else. So, for example, I can discern or discriminate between this plant here on the table that's qualitatively different from this Pellegrino bottle, which is qualitatively different from this light sh lampshade, which is qualitatively different from the plant painting on the wall. This is a certain kind of discrimination, a certain kind of discerning between objects. But Viveka is actually pointing to um, a more fundamental or a more uh, a deeper kind of discernment, which is the ability to discern between reality, what is real, and what is not real, what is true and what is not true. And, um, and this specifically form of viveka of between reality and what is not real comes from Vedanta, uh, which um, had, there are many interpretations of Vedanta, but one of the, the most popular versions of Vedanta stipulates that what is real is Brahman, right? That's the source of existence, and it is, it's everything, it is eternal. Um, it is that from which all things come and to which all things return. And it's stagnant, it's not uh, moving, it is, it's, it's eternal, it's um, stable. And that is real, and reality in this sense is that which is eternal, that which is not changing. Well, the material world is illusory according to Vedanta, it's not real. And so the practice of yoga in within the Vedanta tradition is to be able to discern between the, 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 the illusory reality, which is the world of ephemer, ephemeral nature, all of these moving parts, all of these things that I see which are always changing, that is unreal and what we're, we're seeking to do is discriminate, to practice Viveka, to discern between that and the real Brahman. And then, according to classical yoga, that this viveka practice is a practice of discerning between um, the objects of consciousness. So we call that prakriti in classical yoga. Patanjali calls this prakriti. Samkhya calls it prakriti. Samkhya yoga, which um, the Yoga Sutras is based in. And prakriti is ephemeral nature. It's what v Vedanta would say is illusory, is not real. And what we're seeking to do is discern between what we see, what we're aware of, what we're conscious of, and consciousness itself, the faculty of awareness itself, which is referred to as purusha. So for example, right now I'm, I'm witnessing the camera, I'm witnessing all of these objects and plants around me. I'm even witnessing the objects of my own awareness. For example, my sense of self, Jacob, the character of Jacob, is, is something in my awareness, but that's itself not me. So I'm discerning between what I am as true consciousness, as pure Purusha, which is that which sees all the objects in the world, including my sense of self. So my sense of self, which is also changing in the same way that the material world is changing, is an object of consciousness just as much as any object of consciousness in the world. So we're seeking to discern, discriminate between the faculty of seeing, the pure awareness uh, that is at the, as the ground of our experience and all of those things that I am aware of. And, and in this discernment, a certain kind of realization takes place according to classical yoga. If we were to take a tantric perspective, it's a little more um, friendly to phenomenal reality. Tantra says that everything is ultimately um, uh, an expression of consciousness. So it, from a tantric point of view, we might say that viveka is um, discer discernment between a contracted way of understanding the world. So we can see the world according to a particular kind of mood. And that mood is, is very much socialized by our upbringing, by our culture, by our politics, by our nation state, all of these different things that inform how we view reality. 
that would be um, a contracted way of understanding the world. And we're trying to discern between that socialized way of seeing and the most expansive way of witnessing of seeing, which the Tadric tradition refers to as Shiva um, or Shiva Shakti, this kind of um, absolute potential uh, that we have to witness fully the whole range of, of human and cosmic experience. And so discerning between what's a contracted view versus an expansive and the most expansive view, um, the tantrics might say. So, so that's sort of three ways of thinking about this capacity, this practice of viveka, discernment or discrimination between the real and the unreal, between the witnessing or the seer and the seen, and between the contracted and the expanded uh, perspective on reality. So that's all we have for today. If you have any questions about uh, chalkboard yoga studies or you actually have a, a concept that you'd like to um, put forward to be something to be explored, you can email us at, or you can email me at jacob at embodiedphilosophy.com. That's jacob at embodiedphilosophy.com. And then as usual, if you have not yet signed up to um, receive our weekly wisdom emails where we include a lot of our recent podcasts, videos, past articles, lots of really interesting and um, useful stuff for your own practice and study, uh, go ahead and text the word EMBODY, E-M-B-O-D-Y, to the number 44222. Again, that's E-M-B-O-D-Y to 44222. So thanks so much, everybody. Until next time, see you later.